Talk Showcase on Brownfield. I'm Amy Simpson, and we're here today with Ron Lamberty with the American Coalition for Ethanol. Uh, let's start off talking about the Higher Blends Infrastructure Incentive Program. Tell me a little bit about it. Well, the uh, Higher Blends Infrastructure Incentive Program, which of course, you know, is we call it HBIP because that seems somehow easier to remember or say, I guess, but um, it's a USDA program that funded $100 million worth of fueling infrastructure for both ethanol and um, biodiesel. And the biodiesel was 16 million of it, the ethanol was uh, 84 million. But basically you could apply to get a matching grant to put in infrastructure that you needed at a station to sell E85 or E15 and um, then they would, you know, the federal grants would match. Um, and we participated in it in, it in a couple of ways. Um, we uh, had a, a kind of a recorded a, a Zoom meeting, a webinar sort of thing like we're doing here and broke it up into little segments because um, the application process was, was very complicated. Um, and the, the audience we're trying to reach is mostly single station and small chain owners who own, who own and operate you know, between one and maybe up to 10, but most of them are one or two or three stations. And they don't have time to, you know, take out of the middle of their day and sit in on a webinar. So we did a series of videos and tried to edit them so that we just chopped up the most important stuff. But even after that, I think the application process was a little bit too much for most small station owners. Um, and we don't know how many of those people who saw our videos went and applied. I think we had we figured something like nine or 192 of them went straight to after watching our video went to the application site. But um, that that was what what we did to try and get the word out that uh, there was you know money out there that they could get to in, increase the amount of ethanol they were selling in their stations. And you know how does the program really benefit the renewable fuels industry and agriculture in general? Well, I mean, the, the biggest thing is, is if we can sell higher percentages of ethanol, then even in a down market like we've got now, we can keep our volume somewhat steady. The, the biggest thing was one of the people that we helped quite a bit with this program was Pearson Fuels out in California. And I originally thought they were doing one location, and then I heard where they were doing it for one customer who had 22 locations. But then when the, the grant information was sent back to them, they got approved for 122 locations. And, and that's significant because Pearson is a big, big marketer in California. And though it doesn't seem like, you know, a, a huge amount of fuel, um, they've gone from selling a couple hundred thousand gallons of E85 to in the mid 30 million gallons um, in 200 locations. They opened their 200 just right around October 1st. And in those locations, um, they're, you know, they're, if they're selling 35 million gallons, then that means if they add another 122, we might be looking at you know, 55 million gallons total. And that, the ethanol for that is almost the, you know, the output, the annual output of a 50 million gallon ethanol plant. So just that one marketer can do that much volume. Um, and that's E85. And then on the, on the E15 side, of course, um, if people will realize that they've got equipment that's compatible with E15 already and can get the volume up, then, you know, we're selling about 14 billion gallons of ethanol a year. Uh, theoretically, that could turn into 21. Um, but more likely if we get, you know, 20% of 30%, 40% of the market with E15, then, you know, we'll, we'll see increases more, you know, closer to three and six billion gallons. But it's, that's why it's important is to just keep growing the market, find places to put this ethanol so we can use more ethanol. And of course, in turn, that uses more corn. That's really incredible. And this is part of a, a larger effort to just grow the retail market for these fuels. Um, what are some of the other things that ACE and other uh, partners are doing? Well, it, what, what we're going to now that HBIP is over is we're starting to, um, to promote a, a thing on our Flex Fuel Forward website, which is a website that isn't necessarily a uh, an ethanol website. It's a marketer to marketer exchange where we post stories of people who are selling E85, E15, and other in you know mid mid level blends and have done well doing it. Um, but on that site, which again doesn't doesn't carry any ethanol branding because we want it to be seen as marketers helping other marketers, station owners helping station owners. But we uh, announced in the middle of September a, a tool called FlexCheck, 
where a station owner can go and see if their equipment might already be compatible with E15 because most of it is. And the unfortunate thing is that because of a misinformation campaign that's been going on since E15 was approved, most station owners think that they can't do E15 unless they buy hundreds of thousands of dollars of new equipment. So we're advertising in most of the convenience store industry newsletters and online, doing a lot of online advertising to try and chase down you know, some of these station owners, so they'll, they'll just go on and go on and check. I mean, because right now they, what's happened is the number's been so high that most of them just say, eh, I'm not going to do it. I can't, I can't afford it. And unfortunately, sometimes things like HBIP give the unintended impression that, well, if they're giving away a lot of money, then it must be right. It must cost a lot of money. Um, so what we want them to do, you know, these guys are working in the stores every day. So they don't really, as I mentioned earlier, don't necessarily have time to come to a webinar. But what we, what, they, what we hope they'll do is in their spare time, maybe go to the site and click around and they can put in, you know, the, the name of the tanks they have or the brand of pumps and see if they're compatible with E15. And we think a lot of them will be surprised to find out that they are. And, you know, hopefully that'll make more of them at least consider doing E15 because as their competition starts doing it, they're just going to have to make the decision whether they seed that market to them or if they just go ahead and get in it and, and that's the way you can convert a lot of stations in a very short period of time, which would move a lot of volume in a very short period of time. So, you know, we're, we're pleased so far with the numbers. We'd like to see them higher though. And if people want to know more about either of those programs or other efforts, where's a good place to send them for more information? Well, for, for ACE, for American Coalition for Ethanol, we're ethanol.org. For the Flex Fuel Forward site, it's flexfuelforward.com. Um, and you can go click on there. It's designed for fuel marketers. So it might not, you know, might not appeal to some people, but if you got a station in your area that you'd like to consider doing E15 or E85 or mid-level blends, it's a good place to send them to find out what, what they could do in their business that will uh, bring them new customers and make them more money. And then anything else you can think of we didn't touch base on you want to make sure is mentioned? Do I not? Uh, I think I yammered enough, didn't I? <laughs> it was perfect. It was great. <laughs> I was yeah. like checking though. Um, and, just, yeah. and just to wrap up, um, that was Ron Lambert with the American Coalition for Ethanol. I'm Amy Simpson with Brownfield Acting.